Hello and welcome to Flutter Doctor. In this tutorial, we will be installing Flutter and all its dependencies on macOS. And specifically, I am using an Apple Silicon MacBook Pro of 2021. And so this guide will be valid also for Macs running the most recent Apple Silicon CPU. And before diving into the tutorial, let me make a side note for the Mac M1 users. So if you, like me, are using a recent macOS device that has the Apple Silicon architecture, you have to make sure that you have the Rosetta Translator installed. Otherwise, you need to run this command to install it manually because currently Flutter uses, at least in the stable version, the Rosetta uh, translator. Of course, you can switch to the beta channel if you want. I won't be doing that now, but if you want, you can switch to the beta channel that has more direct uh, native support uh, for the M1 processors. And uh, you can uh, refer to th this uh, issue that tracks uh, the work to support natively M1. But of course, you have to take an eye on this because it can, it will gradually improve the support for this architecture. I'll put this link in the description and let's get to the tutorial. So first of all, let's get to flutter.dev and click on get started. Click on macOS. And uh, we'll start by downloading uh, the Flutter macOS uh, SDK. This will, will take uh, some time. In the meantime, I want to, you to also check your iOS and Android uh, dependencies. So for iOS, uh, we need to have uh, installed the latest version of Xcode. So let's open the App Store and let's search for Xcode. And in my case, it is actually updated to the latest version. Otherwise, please do install or update it. Next, for Android setup, we need to install Android Studio. So I'm going to click on this link and download Android Studio. I accept the terms and here you have to select the correct button based on the CPU you have. I am on a Mac with an Apple chip and I will be back once both these downloads are finished. Now that both files have been downloaded, I'm going to firstly unzip the Flutter SDK file. So I have opened my terminal and I'm going to copy this unzip command here in my home directory. And now I just need to update my path to add the Flutter bin in order to be able to run all the Flutter commands. So if you use bash, you will need to edit either the .bash profile or .bash rc. Because I am using a Z shell, I'm going to edit the related uh, configuration file. So I'm going to say nano.zshrc. And down below, at the bottom of the file, I'm going to paste this line, which means that I need to append to the path, the full path to my Flutter bin, that in my case is located inside my home directory, which are referenced with uh, this uh, home variable, slash Flutter slash bin. Control X to close and Y to confirm and enter to confirm once again. Now let's close the shell, open it again. And now if I run Flutter Doctor, you can see that it is currently missing the whole uh, Android Studio and Android tool chain, and also some uh, Xcode additional dependencies that are Cocoa Pods. And so let's start by dealing with the Android Studio installation. 
So in order to install Android Studio, I'm going to double click on the downloaded file and drag the application to the applications folder and then open it from there. I don't want to import settings. Click on next, standard installation is fine. And it's fine also the Darkula dark theme. Otherwise there is also a light one. And now it is installing various tools, including the emulator and especially important the SDK that is currently at version 32. Next. And here I also am prompted to accept some licenses, which I will do by clicking and accepting. Finish. And now it is downloading all the components that we've seen. And while it is downloading all the dependencies for Android Studio, let's work for a second on this missing Xcode dependency. If you switch to the documentation of the Flutter Get Started, you can see how we can install this CocoaPods dependency that is needed if your app depends on Flutter plugins that use native iOS code. We might need that in the future, so just copy this command, head over to the terminal and run it. And it is now installing the needed uh, um, packages that are based on uh, Ruby. And in the meantime, it is also downloading, as we've seen, the needed Android components. So we'll wait for these two downloads to finish. Okay, now it's finished both to download the Android tools and to install the CocoaPods for iOS. So I'm going to click here, finish on Android Studio. And I already know that I have also to manually install the Android SDK tools. So I'm going to click here on more actions, SDK manager. As you can see, there is the API 32 that has been just installed. But if I switch to the SDK tools tab, I can install the Android SDK command line tools. I'm going to click apply. It will install the SDK tools. I'm going to click OK and it is now downloading and installing the Android command line tools. And while it is doing this, I will put this in background and I want to click on OK. I also want to check my Android emulator and actually if you go under more actions, virtual device manager, you can see that a virtual device has been created for us automatically with the, the latest version of the API, that is version 32. And I can eventually run it by clicking on this button, but I'm not going to do this right now. So let's wait for the SDK tools to finish the installation. You can check here and it has actually finished. So I'm going to click on finish. And now if I switch back to my terminal, and run again Flutter Doctor. Let's see if something else is missing. Okay, I see that some Android licenses have not been accepted for some reason. And this is the only issue that is left. And so I just need to run this Flutter Doctor dash dash Android licenses command, as it says and I can type Y to review the licenses that I haven't accepted and Y again to accept all of the missing licenses. And now if I run again Flutter Doctor, we, ha we just have green check marks and no issues found. So great result. And now we can focus on uh, 
making sure that we also have uh, an iOS simulator. So if we head back over to the Flutter documentation, we can click on set up the iOS simulator. And as you can see, it is just a very simple command that you can run directly from the shell and it is opens-a simulator and it will launch the default iPhone 13 emulator and as we've already seen we also have an Android emulator so we can just visit the virtual device manager once again and launch it as well. Now I want to uh, try to run a simple Flutter app on these devices so I'm going to click on this link and I'm going to run this command to bootstrap uh, a sample app so I'm going to run Flutter create my app and it is now bootstrapping all the code and also installing the dependencies it's finished and now I can code my app in order to open it in my code editor that is PS Code. Yes, I trust the authors of the folder. And here I can open my embedded terminal and run Flutter Run. And it should suggest the list of available devices that we can use to run this. And sure enough, we have our first device that is the Android emulator, the iPhone emulator and we have Chrome for web. In this case I want to run it on the Android emulator first and it will build the application through Gradle and launch it on our Android emulator. So let's switch to it for a second and let's wait for this to run. And after a while you can see that the application has been launched and I can interact with it and uh, if I open my edi editor on the side I can run these uh, commands for instance the hot reload or even the hot restart that should reset this counter from 5 to 0 as you can see. So I can now type Ctrl C to close the application and uh, if I run Flutter Run again of course I can run the application on the other available devices for instance if I type 3 it will launch on Google Chrome so this is a development for web of course so here it is and that's the same if you want to develop for, for web which is natively supported on the stable channel well if you want to also make use of the macOS development which is currently in beta you just need to run this command to explicitly enable this beta feature. Just to finish I'm going to close the application once again with Ctrl C. I'm going to maximize this because I want to install the Flutter extension for VS Code just to enable the whole developer experience. In my case I use daily VS Code so I won't be using Android Studio and if I search for Dart it should be installed by default. Yes, it has been installed as a dependency of the Flutter extension and this gives you um, some useful commands and, uh, and features which you can uh, leverage. You have the possibility to control the application that you are running by refreshing it live but by the way feel free to read the documentation of the extension for more information on this. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more Flutter related content, stay tuned and goodbye.